Hey guys and welcome to another Demon Sort Reviews video and this is of a Ninko 1 uh, Ford GT. So this is a 2013 release I believe. So it's a fairly recent car, it's just, uh, just under two years old now. But it is a very nice looking and fantastic looking car. And also with it being a Ford, uh, Ninko Ford sorry, it would be quite competitive with the other Ninkos that are on the market. This is quite an interesting colour scheme as well. The team has actually moved on from Forge uh, in the championship that they race in to, uh, I believe it's BMW Z4s now. So it's quite, uh, it's, it is actually quite an outdated car in the sense that it's no longer being used and this car no longer actually races. So that is one thing that you might have to bear in mind if you're going to be buying this one is, is it a current car? Is it on the field still? But if it doesn't bother you, then doesn't really bother you. It is a very nice looking car. I haven't tested it yet but I have a good feeling it's going to be just as good as the Camaros, as the Corvettes and even the um, the other Ninko 1 cars, like the Audi Psy, that was the one I was thinking of, that are on the market. It's um, one of many Ford GTs that they've produced as well so if you're not liking this colour scheme in particular there are very many other ones that you can get and use and um, they are quite cheap as well the uh, Ninko ones they're very good at you can pick them up at good prices on the internet and the internet is where to really go for them no real major shops I've seen have stocked them I know models owned it a few Ninkos very rarely and they occasionally got the Carreras and SCX cars in before they went bust so but then they've just been bought out by Waterstone so a few of them are springing back up so it's always worth you know keeping an eye out I believe there's one in London and some other major cities across the UK there's a few model zones there and this tech specs of this car I believe the motor is 20,000 and it's an angle rounder as well there you go the magnet as well is at an angle so it'll be interesting to see if that affects the handling at all it's still sort of mainly central as you can see there so I don't think it'll affect too much around the corners uh, but because the car is an angle rounder that's quite interesting because most of the cars are actually in line drive like the Camaro for instance I know for definite is an in line drive car so Ninko have sort of changed about the uh, setup of this car it's possible because it might have been an earlier production than the Camaro that's quite likely and that's the way that they did it for the Ford and then they decided to try and keep the cars all level when they released the Camaro because if you have a look at the Ninkos and if you've got a few of them you've got some of the earlier ones like this one uh, from cars that were produced earlier on even though I said this one's from 2013 it was probably produced earlier than the Camaro because the Camaro has only recently come out in most major stock car brands that you'll find that they'll have different um, different setups and I think Ninko decided that they were going to try and keep their Ninko 1 range very similar because after all the Ninko 1 range is for domestic use they say which basically implies just home use only you can use them at clubs if you really want but these are purpose built for your ra race track at home to be bashed about a bit they've got no cockpit on the inside I believe this glass most of the time the glass is actually uh, see through or very 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 uh, it's barely you can just about see through it if the light goes through the right ray you can see it but I believe Ninko changed that with the more recent and more current cars they decided that they didn't want to be able to see the inside of the car as well and I said earlier it had a 20,000 rev motor. Now, some of you may be thinking, some of you know the Ninkos, and on a second, there's a few cars that have got 16,000 rev compared to 20,000 rev. But for the domestic use, that is not going to change anything, really. The more powerful the motor you have, it really is more based on how, how long your straights are. If you've got massive long straights and basically a wooden track or something like that, where somewhere purpose-built track that stays up then it's not going to be a massive difference to be honest if you've got your little track at home which fits in a very small area of about eight foot or whatever then you're not going to have um, much of a difference in the in the speed even though that they have got four extra thousand rpm 
So if you're put off by the different motors as well, then you shouldn't be really because the fact that because they're so small, the tracks, hopefully the tracks are small that you're using them on, it won't really make much of a difference. Because we found that out as well with the um, Skeletric motors as well, because obviously Skeletrics produce 18,000 rev as the standard for all their cars, then the next one's 20,000, then I believe it's 25,000, and then it's 30,000, but a few times we've stuck a 20,000 rev motor and even a 25,000 rev motor in a Skeletric car, and it's not really made much difference. The only real difference it makes is a slight difference in acceleration, but then again you have to brake and slow down for all the corners anyway, so if anything it just gives you a bit more work and you have to brake earlier. So that's what I thought was quite interesting about this car. I think I should quickly compare it to the Ford GT of Skeletrix. This one is actually slightly more accurate than the Ford GT that Skeletrix produced, only by the fact the rear wing. This is quite important to uh, note because Skeletrix produced a Ford GT and it has a very tiny rear ring. And I just need to get out of the box quickly, just to show you. And that was kind of a problem with the Ford GT of Skeletrix, is the fact that it's got this tiny little wing on it that breaks every time you crash it. So on the left is your Robertson Racing Ford GT by Skeletrix and on your right is the Ford GT by Ninko One. And as you can see they're very very similar um, obviously because they are the same car in the end but there are some noticeable differences there's some extra bits on the bottom of the chassis here and the rear end is a lot different uh, Skeletrix did, however, produce a car that had um, a bumper on the back there, which was the very last one, which was Lambda Racing, which I have got the model of, and you can check out the review of that one if you do so wish. But out of the two, I would honestly go for the Ninko one. I mean, if you've been on the channel long, or if you, from the start you'll notice it's predominantly Skeletrix cars, but this is one of those times where I would pick Ninko over Skeletrix. We are going to be doing some testing videos of these soon. We are hopefully looking at producing a board with a permanent track down, just a little one for me that I can use and do for test videos as well. And then that will bring the uh, scholarship test drives, well actually slot car test drives back into uh, production as it were because they haven't done well, I haven't done one of those in a long time. And I've been desperate to try and do some videos. There's not been a lot that's coming out However, there are a few cars that are coming out that I'm very, very eager to do. Uh, the Lotus Exige is one of them. The Bentley Continental GT3 will be another as soon as that comes out. I'll probably get that one. And there's a few other cars on the grid, uh, I say the grid, uh, in the catalogue of 2014 that I'm very interested in. And we'll be very, very looking forward to when they come out. Just before we go, the product codes for the Ninko one is 55073 and it's just as for GT DHL because obviously it's sponsored by DHL. And the product code for the Ford GT, which is a Skeletric one, if you're very interested in this one, is C3088. So thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. I'm very sorry that it's been a long time since I've done videos. It's basically because there's not been a lot out, I haven't had much money to buy any cars either, but there are a few things coming out that I'm very interested in, and hopefully I'll be uh, uploading more frequently soon. And also, hopefully I'll be like meeting MC Slots again soon, and getting a few more video uh, cars to borrow off him to review as well. So, that was the review. I have also bought a microphone for the camera, so hopefully that's made some improvements. If you've noticed there's a slight change in the volume, then uh, just let me know as well and uh, hopefully this microphone has actually worked and as always thanks for watching please give me a like comment and subscribe we're almost at 500 as well